So now we're going to talk about psychology and uh, some minor parts in psychology. Psychology is a big area, but uh, we'll talk about psychology and some effects it has in uh, the area of security. So particularly, we will talk a bit about how humans function. So first some basic concepts and then uh, some biases. So we'll see some examples of how this uh, affects security. So the first thing uh, we're going to talk about is mental models. So mental models allows us humans to reason about the world. So basically they are simplifications of real world items uh, that we use when we reason about, uh, for instance, problem solving and how we are uh, going to do things. So uh, one example is the, the water tap. So most people have a mental model of the water tap that the more you open, the more water flows through. And this general model uh, allows us to reason about how the water tap functions. Now, there are other things, um, for instance, the thermostat. Uh, where you might apply uh, the same model. The more you open it, the more it flows. And in the case of the thermostat, it's heat that we're thinking about. So for instance, the higher you turn the temperature, the, the more uh, heat flows out of the radiator, for instance, and then the, uh, then the, the place will heat up much faster. However, this is not entirely true for uh, electric radiators because the way they work is that they, they go on maximum uh, whenever the temperature is below the setting and then they run on maximum effect until the, the temperature is reached. So if the temperature is low and you want it higher, uh, it doesn't make any difference if you put the temperature higher than what you want and then later turn it down or if you turn it to uh, the temperature you want directly. So the thermostat doesn't work uh, in the same way as the water tap. So you cannot use the same mental model for the two. The stove, however, that one uh, is more aligned with how the water tap works. Because if you increase the setting there, you increase the, the heat, the energy that the stove uh, is pushing into the casserole or frying pan or whatever you have on the stove. So in this case, if you want to boil water, it makes sense to put the stove uh, on a higher temperature. This depends on the type of stove. Uh, but for instance, in a, using a gas stove or an induction stove, uh, this is the case uh, because the the purpose of the the stove is to to put a uh, uh, different uh, temperature so basically the it pushes more energy the higher you set it so this actually means that you sort of have a higher flow of heat going into whatever is in your casserole if you increase it so there you there it actually works to have the same mental model and now this affects security uh, in a number of ways. For instance, if we go to, to programming, it actually affects uh, the developers and allows developers to, to make mistakes. For instance, uh, uh, one good example is the, the integers. And uh, we know from maths that the integers are uh, infinite. So you you, your mental model of the integers is that whenever you add two integers, you get something bigger. And this is not exactly true in, uh, in a computer and when you do programming, uh, because in the normal case, when you, when you work uh, in a language such as uh, C or C++, uh, they use the integers of the processor and the processor uh, does everything modulo two to the power of 32 or two to the power of 64, depending on your, your computing system. There are of course libraries where uh, you can get uh, uh, 
an infinite amount of, of integers as well, but that's not uh, what you get, get by default in many languages. So this means that the mental model uh, of the integers doesn't fit what uh, you actually get from the computer. So you can actually make a few mistakes there. So for instance, uh, the idea that if you add two, in, two positive integers together, you get something bigger, that's not true when you get close to two to the power of 32 or two to the power of uh, 64, because at some point there, whenever you add two positive integers, you will overflow and uh, possibly get something negative instead. And this, uh, this is a cause for a lot of uh, vulnerabilities in software. Uh, so it affects uh, security quite drastically. Another example is uh, normal users who don't necessarily understand or have a correct mental model of how a secure connection works. Uh, so they don't know how uh, SSL TLS works, and that's normal. I mean, that's easy to understand. It's it's quite a lot to to deal with. So basically, the uh, the web browsers uh, try to add some tools for these users uh, to try to uh, use SSL TLS. Uh, correctly so they have secure connections so for instance they you have the padlock which is green if everything is secure and nice uh, but what does that actually mean um, for instance a lot of phishing sites uh, could simply get uh, signed certificates and then they would have green padlocks although it is not secure you're not connected to your bank for instance you're connected somewhere else so there, that, that simple mental model uh, is not enough uh, to protect users. Uh, another problem with this is that the user's mental model of the computer system and the web browser uh, and the, the web is perhaps not uh, entirely accurate at times either. So for instance, the user might not know which part of the interface is actually trustworthy, that is the web browser, but not the web pages that it's showing. So for instance, you might have a web page showing a green padlock, and then the users might apply their uh, mental model of SSL TLS and think that, hey, this is uh, a secure website whereas it might not be. Another uh, basic concept is uh, capture errors. Uh, this is probably something you are very well familiar with. Uh, it's when a trained behavior is used instead of the correct behavior. So for instance, if I drive every day to work, the very few times that I'm supposed to drive to uh, another direction, I still go out on the, uh, in the direction of work and then I realize, oh, I'm driving the wrong direction and then I have to turn. Another example is uh, when you are going home from work, normally you go home, but this particular time you were supposed to stop at the store, but you simply drove past the store and then you had to turn and go back when you realized. Uh, another common problem uh, is users who get error messages and they, in most cases, you just click OK on the error message and it goes away and you can continue doing what you're doing. So uh, users basically automatically click this OK button and then they continue. And this is bad because this, is, this can be used by attackers uh, to fool users to approve things that they actually shouldn't. Another problem in, in security uh, is the post-completion error. Uh, this, is, uh, this is relevant when you design uh, secure systems. Uh, for instance, for the post-completion error, uh, that's when uh, the user, uh, once the user has reached its goal, uh, it basically thinks that the task is complete 
whereas it might not be. So for instance, there is a reason that the ATMs return your uh, card before uh, you get the cash. Because uh, ATMs that were designed the other way around that gave you the cash first and then the card, uh, with those systems, people had the tendency to forget the cards in the ATM because once they, because the goal they had was to get money from the ATM, and once they got the money, they were done and they left, so they forgot the card. So these are things you, you need to take into account when you design systems. Another thing that affects uh, how humans function is cognitive load. Uh, this is, for instance, uh, stress, multitasking, because when you have a high cognitive load and you have, uh, you're doing things simultaneously, you, focus, you tend to focus on one thing and then you do the other things on autopilot. So, for instance, most times that you actually drive the wrong way, uh, so do the capture error, uh, that's probably because you've been thinking deeply about something or been engaged in a conversation with uh, another passenger in the car or something similar. Because then you have your, your cognitive load has been higher uh, and it, uh, you have not been, uh, driving the car has not been the main uh, focus of your attention, which means the driving of the car has been on autopilot which means you probably drive to work, which is what you always do, uh, or most of the time, I should say. So then you, you actually mistake uh, what you're going to do and just do the normal things instead. Uh, so another uh, a nice comic strip, which sort of uh, summarizes the problems uh, that we've been talking about here is uh, this one from, from XKCD. Of course, it's a bit exaggerated, but uh, it's, uh, it's to illustrate the point that, for instance, when uh, we're used to reading text which has references and be critical when there are no references, uh, then uh, we might not always check the references very thoroughly. So, uh, you can be, be fooled by uh, this uh, type of thing. So, so you, you do autopilot, uh, go through and yeah, okay, it has the references, it looks fine. Uh, so I accept what they're saying. Now we also have uh, biases and uh, these are really hard to, to counter. So for instance, uh, we have uh, the automation bias, which means that we have a tendency to trust computers and their algorithms to do work properly. Uh, because the computer is sort of perceived as objective, uh, it's just following this algorithm. So we don't question it because it works and it does its magic and it gives us a, a result which is uh, correct in most, uh, most situations. But the problem is the computer is not objective because these algorithms are biased. So they do things wrongly sometimes. And I mean, sometimes they have plain bugs uh, that do things wrongly. But uh, we have a bias towards trusting them. Uh, so this can cause a lot of problems, uh, especially with automated decision making and things like that because we, we don't uh, question these, although the, the computer's uh, output might be very weird, we have a tendency to accept it because we think that we are probably wrong uh, rather than uh, the computer being wrong. Uh, another example uh, of this is uh, there were two studies which uh, looked into how people use uh, the Google results. So in one study, they uh, had some students and uh, they uh, uh, modified the search results a bit. So they reordered uh, Google search results. And the students uh, had a tendency to pick uh, links from higher up, although the, the small abstracts, the snippets that Google gives you, 
uh, were less relevant to their search uh, compared to results that were further down. And uh, in a in a similar similar study, uh, they they also modified uh, the search results. But in this case, the researchers uh, looked into voting preferences and how they could affect uh, people's opinion about things. And the researchers found that uh, by changing these uh, search results, uh, they could affect uh, the subject's uh, voting preferences without the subjects uh, being aware of this change. So it was very subtle and uh, of course very dangerous uh, from a democratic perspective. Another bias that we have is uh, confirmation bias. That is that we seek out information that confirms our beliefs rather than uh, seek out information that questions our beliefs. Uh, so this makes us bad at uh, testing hypotheses, for instance. Uh, so there are uh, users that test whether a site is a phishing site by giving it the, its username and password. And if the site knows them, yeah, then it must be legit. Of course, this, uh, this doesn't work. Uh, this is partly, partly due to uh, a wrong mental model and partly due to, to the confirmation bias because uh, when it turns out to, to work, uh, the users believe, yeah, okay, I was correct because this is uh, how, it's usu how it usually is. Uh, a related problem is the reverse authorization fallacy, uh, which basically uh, says, uh, give me the username and password and I'll verify them. Uh, so if an authority tells you that, uh, then you have a tendency to actually do that and uh, then they say whether it's uh, uh, right or wrong. And of course, you usually give them the correct ones, so they will just tell you that yes, they are correct. And uh, then you have uh, fallen for, for this problem. Another bias that we have is disconfirmation bias. And uh, this is the problem that we rather accept something which is plausible, but might be wrong, rather than something that is implausible, but correct. So for instance, if the website behaves like our bank, then it must be the bank, although it's run from Russia instead of Sweden, or wherever, whichever country you're currently in or where your bank is located, uh, because it is more, uh, most plausible that it actually is the bank, because that's what happens every day. And then once in a lifetime, you, you are subject to this type of attack. So it's very implausible that uh, the attack is very implausible, but it might actually be correct. Now, of course, this example is is a uh, is a bit uh, exaggerated, but uh, there are situations where where this actually uh, causes a problem. Uh, another uh, bias that has caused a lot of problems in in security historically is projection bias. That is that everyone thinks like me, uh, because some. Uh, we have seen a lot of examples where someone designs a system and uh, then expects the users to think like the designer. So for instance, uh, there has been a lot of problems with uh, the assumption that if you are logged in, then you must be a good guy like me because I have designed this procedure to keep the bad guys out. So. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, one of the good guys who actually has logging credentials would be a bad guy. Uh, so this has caused a lot of problems with insider attacks. So finally, we have blind spot bias. Uh, 
all these biases that we have talked about are unconscious and that makes them really difficult to see for our conscious thought. So it's really difficult to try to keep yourself away from, from these biases and protect yourself from the biases uh, because they are uh, really deep inside you and really difficult uh, to detect. And that was everything uh, for uh, this time. Thanks a lot.